Hey everyone, we're back and we're going to start moving into the beginning of the 20th century. So the 20th century has actually been divided into kind of two larger sections. We've got the period revival styles and then we've got the modern styles. And so for this video, we're just going to look at the modern or the period revival styles. So we're going to look at the colonial, the Tudor, the Chateauesque and the mission. So the colonial revival, what I want you guys to keep in mind is when we start talking about these period revival styles, um, the colonial revival, the, your keyword is revival. We are bringing something back that we've already seen before. So if it looks a little familiar, it's because we've seen it before. We're taking inspiration from the past and, and modernizing it and incorporating it in a new way. So the colonial revival was actually pretty popular for a pretty long time here in the U.S. from about 1880 to 1955. The audience was middle-class Americans, and we pulled designs from the 17th and 18th centuries. Uh, it brought back styles like the Georgian, the Sopbox, and the Cape Cod. And if you can't remember that style, those styles off the top of your head, they're basically the rectangular, simple homes, a little bit smaller, um, and just a really basic design, kind of like the house that you see here. Uh, with the new colonial revival, there was more emphasis placed on the front door. So that's kind of how this is what we brought back. This is what we've introduced. Uh, so here's kind of the beginning of this really nice ornate front door, even to the point where they've decorated all throughout this section right here. So it, the goal was for the front door to stand out. And then we also still have the decorative pediment supported by pilasters um and the columns themselves so here's your big pediment we also have all the cornice brought up here that spider-man's pointing to and then if you remember um the pill the pilasters are they're kind of tucked behind there it's hard to see the picture's not the best but there's those flattened columns remember the back of the column is basically shaved down flat and it is stuck to the wall does not serve a purpose to hold anything up it's just for decoration and then the actual pillars themselves or the columns are what's actually there needed for structural purposes. So this should look a little familiar, or at least this top section right here should look familiar. So this is a Tudor style, and this is around 1890 to 1940, give or take a few years. Uh, but it brought back that half-timbered style that was brought in earlier by the Germans. So it was very, very common. We basically made the tops of our house look like that. And then the bottoms were using what we call these contrasting materials, which is the brick down here versus the wood in plaster up here. So two completely different materials. We've added them together and you get what literally looks like somebody copy, paste and Photoshop another house on top of this. Massive chimneys were still the focal point of the interior homes, and they also stood out prominently against the exterior. This isn't the best example for showing that. There is still a chimney. It's still here kind of more in the center of the home. Um, and then gable roofing is another distinguishing feature of the Tudor style home. So all these right here, they have that triangle on the end, triangle on the end, triangle on the end. And all these roofs branch off of the original roof right here, which is also that gable style. The Chateauesque, um, one of my favorite homes, um, along with the Queen Anne, because they do kind of look a little similar. This was another um, French influence. And the reason they called it the Chateauesque is that many have features that resemble castles. They are literally the smaller kind of modern day castles here in the US. Um, they were very expensive to build, which means that they were generally passed down through generations. Once one family member or one generation built it, the idea is that you just kept willing it to the next generation so it can stay within the family. However, these homes, along with them being expensive to build, they were very expensive to keep up. So they were so expensive that a lot of people after a while couldn't afford to, to upkeep on them. So they usually sold the house um, just to try to make some of the money back from it and move into something that was a little bit more cost effective. So if you guys try to guess or use Google Translate, and try to guess what Chateauesque means. The answer is obviously somewhere on this page. And the last style that we're going to look at is the mission style. So this is around 1890 to 1920. This was really popular. You still see some modern takes on this here throughout different areas. Unfortunately, a lot of the areas in which we live in, a lot of our homes are being bought out by um, larger building companies. So they tend to, all the homes tend to look very, very similar. And their layouts, whenever you build a home, they tend to have preset layouts that you put together. 
Um, so your house may be slightly different than the house next door, but I'm sure if you go about two blocks over, your house is a replica of one that's already existing. With a lot of these older, older styles, um, potentially around in like the St. Charles area, further kind of towards that way, um, you're going to see a bunch of different house styles all mixed in within the same neighborhoods. And this is kind of where you would see these mission style homes sprinkled in. So they were very popular and they, and they origina originated out in California and then they eventually spread eastward. They were mostly inspired by California's Hispanic heritage. And then because of that, this style was fashioned after old mission churches and, ha and houses and buildings and things like that. So what they did is they kind of took this idea of this is a, our churches, a very important place to our heritage. And we're going to try to incorporate that into our living, everyday living. So then we started building them on a much smaller scale um, and would call them homes. So this is a style that we really haven't seen. This is about the only one that introduces more than what we've seen before. So what's important about this design is that they are popular for their arched doorways and windows. So it was very common for them to have um, the roundness there along with the windows as well. They also had tiled roofs. So they weren't the, it wasn't thatch, it wasn't shingles or anything like that. They were actually um, clay and different types of clay and ceramic tiles. And then the exterior wall, which is all throughout here, was made of stucco. So it was textured. It wasn't necessarily 100% flat, kind of like how you would see our interior walls. And it wasn't the, the siding that was um, overlapped with each other. So those are the four houses, a quick little glimpse of all those four different types of house styles within the beginning of the um, 20th century. So your assignment, just like you guys have seen it before, a handful of questions, and then answer in the boxes, and then submit when you're finished. If you guys have any questions, you know to email me or join the WebEx that you'll see later this week.